Good morning. Welcome to Kensington Congregational Church. I'm the Reverend Dr. Holly Norwick, and I am delighted to be worshiping with all of you this morning. Surround sound is good. <laughs> we have just a couple of announcements before we begin this morning. I just want to announce next week, our beloved Reverend Olivia will be here to lead you in service. So welcome her and come and give her hugs. We've missed her in this space. And then two weeks from there, or two weeks from this, this week, is Stewardship Sunday, where we will be celebrating stewardship and our church-wide thank you luncheon will take place immediately after worship, to which all of you within the sound of my voice are invited. So please let us know if you're coming. Are there any other announcements this morning? Do you have one? Okay. Hi, I'm Pam Backlasky. I just want to add one thing to Pastor Holly's Please. announcement about Stewardship Sunday. This week you're going to be receiving a mailing, just one mailing this year, and inside you're going to find a 2025 gift card. So this is similar to the pledge cards we've had in the past. You can look for its bright, bright pink. And you're going to cut one part to bring back to church and one part to keep for yourself for your gift for 2025. And we're looking forward to seeing you in two weeks at the luncheon. Thank you. <clears throat> Judy Zuffalato for missions. Um, we will still be collecting for El Salvador at coffee hour. Also, this uh, week I received a notice from um, Alex, our liaison with DCF. There's a family that's been living in a motel for six months that just got an apartment. So they are in need of pots and pans, um, twin and queen size sheets, and kitchen utensils. So if anybody has any extra of that hanging around, if you could try to get in touch with me this week because they're moving in November 1st. Um, I would appreciate that. They have children? Hmm? Do, do they have children? Two children, a six and a 12 year old, I think. So twin size sheets. And they said standard or queen, but go with queen, better big than small. So, um, did you I'll hear that? Coffee hour. Okay, so there's a family who is transitioning into a new apartment after being in a hotel for six months, and they need basically all the essentials. Particularly, they need twin and queen-size sheets, um, bedding, pots and pans, kitchen utensils, those things. So if you have those things that you're willing, please see Judy. Any other announcements this morning? All right, let us open our minds and hearts for worship this morning through music. Our song of invocation again is Sanctuary, which is an insert in your bulletin. Please join me. join me in the call to worship that is printed in your bulletin. We gather together away from the rush and the race to celebrate the generous spirit that sings without fear may all have enough. We gather to live into the work of God's call. We gather in grace, awake to the despair of so many, awake to the chance to be more and the possibilities seated within. We gather to grow, to change moment by moment 
in grace again and again. We gather in hope, ready to do more than talk, ready to make change, one letter, one meal, one home, one gift, one hand at a time. Ready to live and move and be, ready to be the change God calls us to be. We gather to give our time and our talents, our hopes and our energy. We gather to be, just as God made us, generous and filled with hope. Please pray with me. Eternal God, we pray that we will make stewardship a way of life. Help us to hear your call to be good stewards, caretakers, and managers of all your gifts by sharing them for your purposes. Show us how to make your priorities our priorities and to put our faith into action. As we give back the talents, treasures, and time with which we have been so blessed, lead us in service, service of our church, service of our community, and service of our world. May we serve you and pray with a joyful spirit of mind and heart. Amen. And now I invite you to rise in body or in spirit and join me in our first hymn. You'll find it on page 250 of your pew hymnal. seated. I now want to invite Jacoby to come and share his testimony with us this morning. Good morning. Um, 
To me, giving is a way I help out. Whether it's giving my time to help the church or give food to people in need, it helps me feel closer to God. I feel better when I give more than receive. Did you know when you give, it releases endorphins that give you joy and satisfaction in the brain? However, I think giving doesn't just help you or make you happy. It helps realize that there are people that care about them. Even if it is giving quality time or even just giving time for people to talk, it helps people see that they are not alone. One of my earliest memories from when I was a kid was Christmas morning. Of course, I was excited for the presents and opening them. But after I was done opening all my presents, me and my siblings would give gifts to each other. While we were giving each other's gifts, in those moments, I felt more excited to give my siblings their presents because it, made, it gave me joy knowing I can make someone happy. Usually, me and my siblings wouldn't get along, but in those moments of giving, I felt the most connected with them. This is why I think giving doesn't just make you happy or other people happy. It brings people together. Thank you, Jacoby. This morning's offering will now be received. As the choir is coming down, I want you to know this anthem came to me about a month and a half ago, and we programmed this. We've been practicing it for a month, and as you listen to the lyrics, you'll know why that we raised this today in honor of all the men and women that are fighting that fire in Connecticut and Berlin in our backyard. So we dedicate, we are blessed to all of those who are fighting so we can remain blessed.
God, we are blessed. We offer these gifts in the spirit of generosity in response to your many blessings in our lives. As we offer our treasures and our hearts to you, may they be used to pass on the promise of peace, of life, and community to all in need of your gifts and presence in their lives. Amen. Friends, now it is time for the children and youth to come forward. Poor Miss Gwen has lost her voice, so Miss Chris is going to come and bless us with our children's message. So join us for our children's message this morning. Come on down. I wish I could sit down here with you, but <laughs> you'd have to pick me up afterwards. <laughs> okay. Hi. Hi. I know some of you, and I've seen all of you, so I'm Miss Chris, and I'm so happy to be able to fill in for Miss Gwen, who is losing her voice today. So we've been talking about generosity in church. Do, what does that... Yeah. A little louder? Okay. Oh, I have no problem with that. Okay. <laughs> Whoops. Okay. So, do you know, what does that mean, word mean to you, generosity? Anybody know what that means? When somebody's generous? Yeah? Well, I think you're generous by, like, giving to other people. By giving to other people? Great answer. Absolutely. So, what kinds of things can you give to other people? Food, that's wonderful, and we do that. We give food to the local food pantry. Yep, what else? Water. Water, very, very important. We can't live without water, right? Yep. What's that, honey? Flowers, Flowers? wonderful, yes, absolutely. Maybe money. Money, important, yep. Light. What's that? Light. Light, yeah. Okay. Did you have an idea you wanted to say? No? Okay, great ideas. So today we're going to talk about someone who was very, very generous, and he lived a long, long time ago. wonder if you've ever heard of someone named John Chapman. Have you ever heard that name before? You have. Do you know who he was? No? He was known by another name, and I'm going to give you a good hint. You got it, Johnny Appleseed. Okay. Ah, you've heard about Johnny Appleseed. Probably you've. At my school. At your school. Yep, yep. Well, I used to teach school. There was. Was it this book? Maybe or another book about Johnny Appleseed. A different kind of book, but it was about his life. So I'm going to put this. I had an apple for breakfast today. So. Oh, not, not crazy about apples? <laughs> well, it was pretty delicious, let me tell you. That was crazy? Okay, well, I thought it was pretty good. Anyway, <laughs> John Chapman, who was also known as Johnny Appleseed, was born a long time ago in 1774. So that was, what? 250 years ago, something like that, in Massachusetts. And he was a very, very gentle man and a very generous man. And he planted apple seeds. And throughout his life, he was very generous with his apple seeds. He, he traveled uh, many, many miles on foot. He didn't have a horse or a car or a wagon or anything. He, he walked and he gave away many of those apple seeds um, to people so that they would have something to eat. So if they planted those seeds, what would grow from them? Apple trees. Apple trees, right. And guess what? Apples are one of the foods that will last all year round. 
So that was pretty important way back then when they didn't have refrigerators or anything to keep food. So if people grew their own apples, they would have food all year round. And uh, he was like, a, he was like a, a missionary. He was very, very generous. He loved animals, very gentle with animals. He was devoted to the Bible. And um, he got along very well with the Native Americans, which not all um, people who came to this country did that. So he, he was a wonderful, wonderful person. And he became known, even when he was alive, as Johnny Appleseed. And you can probably understand why, right? Since he went around uh, planting and giving away a lot of his uh, apple seeds. I bet you know a song about him. Do you know a song about Johnny Appleseed? Oh, the Lord's been good to me, and so I thank the Lord for giving me the things I need, the sun, the rain, and the apple seed. The Lord's been good to me. Have you heard that one before? No? You might have heard that. All right, well, maybe we'll sing it at the end again. So I've got a book here that Miss Gwen gave me called Johnny Appleseed, right? Here he is holding an apple. This is a story about Johnny Appleseed. With a name like that, you would think he was make-believe. But, nope, Johnny Appleseed was a real person who lived more than 200 years ago. What? Yeah. More than 200 years? More than 250 years ago. What? Yeah, I know, it's, it's hard to believe, but there were people who lived back then. <laughs> They're not alive anymore, but yeah. <laughs> it was a sunny fall day in Massachusetts when a boy named Johnny Chapman was born. The baby had cheeks as red and round as apples. <laughs> Johnny's big sister Elizabeth was happy to have a little brother. The children played together with whatever they could find. They didn't have Xboxes or anything like that then. Right? <laughs> Okay. Oh, good. You don't know about that. Okay. And the and the okay. And the sun shone, and the rain fell, and little Johnny played, and all was well. Johnny's family got bigger. Johnny and his sister were joined by ten younger stepbrothers and stepsisters. Wow. So ten plus two. How many kids is that in the family? Twelve. Twelve kids. Wow. What a busy, noisy house. I, can I know. How many can imagine. Bags are there? Who knows? Probably not 12. I don't, they probably had to share some beds. Johnny would go outdoors when he needed quiet time. Sometimes he'd walk along the river. The squishy mud felt good under his feet. Other times he would sit under a tree and read. So they did have books back then. They had books. That was good. Johnny would watch the animals in the wild, the foxes playing in the meadows, the deer dashing through the woods, and the birds soaring high in the wide blue sky. If he found an injured animal, Johnny would take care of it until the creature was well. Wow, what a nice guy, huh? Johnny liked being outside. When he got older, he went to work in the apple orchards just like his great, great, great grandfather long before him. And the sun shone and the rain fell and Johnny grew up and all was well. Whoops, there we go. Johnny learned everything about growing apples. He was happy planting seeds, taking care of the trees and munching on the delicious fruit, just like I did this morning for breakfast. And it was really delicious. Okay. Lots of people were moving out west back then. When Johnny was all grown up, he decided to go west too. He didn't bring much with him. For a hat, he used his pot, and a burlap sack did fine for a shirt. And shoes, well, why wear shoes when you have two perfectly good feet? Hmm. So he went barefoot, wow. I wonder if he did that all year round. Johnny traveled the countryside. The sun kept him warm by day. The stars made a roof over his head at night. 
The rain washed him clean, and the animals kept him company. Wow, so he didn't have a big backpack with lots of stuff, no tent. Hmm. Sometimes Johnny would stop and plant apple seeds. As soon as seedlings grew, he'd sell the small plants to families moving west. When they got to where they were going, the families planted Johnny seedlings and grew trees of their own. Johnny was friends with everyone, which hopefully we should be, right? Yeah. Wherever he went, he'd bring seedlings, pitch in with chores, and share stories of his adventures. The seasons passed. Every fall, Johnny gathered seeds from ripe apples. Every spring, he planted the seeds and passed the seedlings to settlers. He planted so many apple seeds that before long, people started calling him, what? Johnny Appleseed. And the sun shone and the rain fell and trees filled the land and all was well. Year after year, Johnny tended his orchards, visited friends and family, and slept under the stars. Because of him, people always had fresh fruit to eat. Because of him, the land grew more beautiful. Johnny Appleseed left behind thousands and thousands of apple trees all across America. Just think, the next apple you eat may be from an orchard that was first planted by Johnny Appleseed over 250 years ago. Pretty amazing. And the sun shone and the rain fell and Johnny's story lives on and all is well. And that's the end of the story, but it's not really the end, right? Because we're all still eating apples today. Maybe thanks to John Chapman, otherwise known as Johnny Appleseed, who showed that wonderful, generous spirit. So let's, let's end by singing that song for Johnny Appleseed again. You ready? Oh, the Lord is good to me, and so I thank the Lord for giving me the things I need, the sun, the rain, and the apple seed. The Lord's been good to me. Let it be so. Okay. Shall we say a little prayer? Dear Lord, thank you for John Chapman, known as Johnny Appleseed, and thank you for all of the apples and all of the wonderful abundance of food that we have in our lives, all of the generous spirits that we are surrounded by. Thank you for all of the gifts that you have bestowed upon us, dear Lord. Amen. You can go off to your church school. Our first scripture reading this morning is found in the second book of Corinthians, chapter 9, verses 6 through 12. And you can find it on page 183 to 84 in the New Testament section of your Pew Bible. Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. 
their righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Here ends the reading. Our second scripture reading this morning is found in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 11 through 16, and you can find it on page 194 in the New Testament section of your pew Bible. So Christ gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in faith and in knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become In every respect, the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, knows and grows and builds itself up in love. Each part does its work. Here ends the reading. Please sing with me. Good morning, church. When I lived in Hawaii, I had the blessing of being a nanny for a few families across the years. Each family needed me just a little bit differently, but there was one family in particular where I had the kids alone more than the others. It was a military family. Dad was overseas. I think I saw him maybe once in the years that I loved this family. And mom was real life NCIS. So she was gone for various amounts of time in order to serve. You see, usually, most of the other families, I lived with the family alongside the parents and worked with them to take care of all of the kids, usually anywhere from three to five kids in a family. But in this case, there was no parent coming home late at night or even over the weekend. They were mine. Seven days a week, no matter what was happening in my life, no matter what was happening in theirs, I had twin five-year-olds and a 16-year-old, all girls, all needing very different things from me. There were milestones. There were crises. There were things that we experienced together that I will never forget. Their lives are etched into mine, and hopefully mine is in theirs in a small way. There were formative moments, ones that potentially changed the way they grew into their understanding of a human, I may have only had them for a short period of their long life, but during each and every aspect of their lives, they were my responsibility. I may have only had them for a little while, and I might not have been with them 24-7 as they were in school and I was at work, but from battling the little's bath time to helping the older one get her driver's license, they were in my hands, and I had a choice. How do I care for them? How do I love them? How do I steward these precious lives? 
How can something, in this case, someone, who isn't necessarily mine, be something I love so deeply that my days form around them? You see, I, when I was caring for these kids, it was my time in life that I thought I didn't have a whole lot to give. I didn't have a lot of money. I was working full time, so you can add up the hours of those days. Work and the kids, that all that came with it, that was my life. Then after being the one that they counted on completely, one of the parents would return home from deployment or overseas, and I would step aside until I was needed again. Sometimes it was terribly difficult to be a good steward because when one is a good steward, each and everything that we are entrusted to care for becomes important, just as those remarkable kids were. They were not my kids, but really, can we say in good conscience that any other person is ours? Caring for other humans, particularly littles, and living and breathing creations of God, whether I was a nanny or whether we are a foster parent, a parent, a relative, a caretaker, this is what stewardship feels like. Stewardship is about our relationship to self, to neighbor, to God, to the rest of creation. A steward is someone entrusted with the responsibility for something that doesn't belong to them. Thinking in stewardship reminds me that all I have and all I am ultimately does not belong to me, but to another. For a time, I'm given responsibility to wisely manage, to thoroughly love what belongs to someone else. Here's the thing, though. Stewardship, understanding that we are called to be caretakers of God's blessings, isn't a one-and-done endeavor. Just like those children, they were the object of my love, my time, my energy, my money, my prayers, day in and day out. We, all of us here, in body and in spirit, we have been given those amazing gifts to, to steward as well. One of those amazing, living, breathing, loving, powerful gifts that we have to give and to steward is this church. The mission of this church is to build, to form, and sustain disciples. The aim of discipleship, the aim of stewardship, is the development, not just the financing of a church's operational budget, but the development of changing the lives of those within and moving out. Giving is part of discipleship, part of our spiritual formation. When God breaks in upon a sufficiently prepared people, a new generosity emerges, one that is outgoing and joyous and spontaneous and free. Giving is a discipleship issue. Discipleship is the decision to live our lives in accordance to the teachings of Jesus. We strive to model ourselves after Christ in all that we do. Part of the way we orient our lives in that way is we choose to give the way he did. And part of the way that we choose to give is to recognize that being able to do so is a gift in and of itself. We must remember we are not owners, we are stewards. And stewardship, though, isn't entirely about tithing. Those things are important, and we recognize what it means to steward in that way. And stewardship is woven throughout the culture of this church. It is multifaceted. It is holistic. It is ongoing. It's be, it has to be more about the well-being of God's people than the bottom line. And it can only come through a generous heart. That means no other single thing is going to effectively teach, teach us stewardship but for the teachings of Christ. This church is a gift, a power, a living, breathing gift entrusted to us by God for care. It's not just our church on Sunday. This is our church seven days a week. And we have been entrusted some of us are only able to be here in this lovely physical place on Sundays. Some of us are only able to come on Wednesdays for Bible study. Some of us are able to come and meet here several times a week. Some of us are here for the summer. And some of us only make it to Easter and to Christmas. And yet, just like when I was a nanny... No matter what is happening in your life, no matter what is happening in the life of the church, this is your church seven days a week. 
And that is really good news, I think. Because that means that there is an abundance of ways that we can love and care for and steward KCC, the people here, and most importantly, God's ministry of love and affirmation. And our scripture says that we read a moment ago, there are apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers to equip his people for work of service so that the body of Christ might be built up when we reach all of unity. What does that mean? That means for us that God has equipped KCC with preachers and bakers and prayer warriors, card writers, deacons, trustees, ushers, greeters, musicians, children, teachers, singers, technicians, sextons, you name it. Every single one of us comprises this body. And just like the scripture, <clears throat> it is so that we will build up and reach unity with God. As we learned last week, our family is a growing and evolving and more amazing piece than it was before with a growing body that we are all little pieces of God's amazing puzzle that is KCC. And it is continually being formed. Each of us is what makes a church the church. What you bring to the table, whether it is money or prayer or talent, your presence, joy, a hopeful moment, or a comment on live stream, you are a steward of this amazing place, which, as we know, is only a tiny piece of the wider church, the church with a capital C that lives and breathes within each of us as we take our leave from the building. You see, stewardship, my friends, is a way of life. It is the foundation of discipleship. And now we have an amazing gift, an amazing thing to steward. We have been given the opportunity to steward KCC. So join me in all of the amazing ways we can do just that. Amen. Good morning, my friends. Before we begin our prayer today, I want to share with you um, some news that some may not have heard. We're going to gather today to bless Miss Gwen. We lost Miss Marge May over the weekend. Um, she died peacefully in the arms of her family and I. Um, she went very quickly, but very, very peacefully, if I might tell the story. So we were in the emergency room, and she was declining. And we asked for her just second round of comfort measures. The moment they gave her her comfort measures, she calmed down. The whole family came around and grabbed onto her, and she could feel it. You can hear and feel in those moments. And we began to pray. And as we prayed, her numbers gently dropped. And we saw her float away to God while we were holding her and praying. It was an amazing moment, a powerful moment. And I'm going to ask that instead of praying over Gwen, because um, everybody gets to grieve the way they want, we are going to bless her prayer shawl together so that she can take this home and she can put it around her. And it's just like all of us are hugging her in the moment. So for those who can and are able and want to come in physically, join me. Or you may sit where you are and put up your powerful prayerful hands. I'll wait to see what you'd like to do.
please pray with me. Holy God, we are grateful. Grateful for the opportunity to have had Marge in our lives. Grateful that she is forever etched in the confines of this space. Grateful that now she is free to be everything you have designed her to be. She will no longer feel pain, no longer struggle. Lord, in this moment and moments moving forward, we now ask your presence for Gwen and her family as they mourn the loss of their matriarch. We ask that you give them comfort in knowing that she is in rest and in peace. And we ask that all of the prayers that are being said aloud and not are infused into this prayer shawl so that every time Gwen touches it, she is consumed by our embrace. Join me, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive our debts as we have sought in temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Continuing this time of prayer, are there any other joys or concerns we want to lift up this morning? As Pam is coming around, prayers for Bethany's brother-in-law, Tim, who lost both of his parents very recently. I ask for prayers of healing for my son's mother-in-law, who was rushed to the hospital. Um, not conscious, her, one of the daughters found her on the floor, and through, um, I guess, a number of tests, they found that she had septic shock and a mini stroke, and it's, she has swelling on the brain. It's affected her heart, and they're trying to stop it from going to the kidneys, and she still has not regained consciousness. She's in ICU at St. Francis Hospital, so... I've been praying since I heard, and I hope uh, all of you can send a prayer, too, uh, that we miss Anita, and we hope that she'll have a speedy recovery soon. Thank you. Uh, Bill Furman, I just would like to say, uh, ask for prayers for all our first responders for the firefighters here in town and for the surrounding towns that are helping us and for the family of the, the one who lost his life fighting that fire from Wethersfield. They really need our prayers and our support at this point. I would also like to say the happiest of birthdays for a very special Mr. Furman as well. Happy birthday, my friend. Karen Benoit continues prayers for uh, Karen and Michael Simmons. And one joy, the boy from Avon, his name is Leon, uh, excuse me, Liam. He had been hit by a bicycle, uh, he was on his bicycle and was hit by a car earlier this month. He has, is now out of his medically induced coma. They have moved him to Chicago where they specialize in traumatic brain injuries. And I, I can show you a Facebook video of him smiling on the gurney with a thumbs up. So um, he is recovering. Thank you. Please pray with me. Generous and loving God, 
You have called us to be disciples of your son, Jesus, and good stewards of your many gifts. Open our minds and our hearts to a greater awareness and deeper appreciation of your countless blessings. Transform us through the power of your Holy Spirit to nurture a stewardship way of life, marked by faithful prayer, service to others, and generous sharing in all that we do. We ask this in all things through Jesus, our Redeemer, who topples the dividing walls by the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask this and all things in the words that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you now to rise in body or in spirit. Join me in our final hymn. It is in the other side of your musical insert, Freely, Freely. This is our church, seven days a week. Let us love it with all of our hearts, all of the time. Amen. 